Hello. In this video, I'm going to make a cold frame because for the first time in my gardening life, I'm going to have a go at growing my own vegetables. I'm also going to have a go at growing some salads and some herbs. I don't have a greenhouse, so I'm hoping that my new cold frame, which I'm going to build along this south facing hedge in the compound at the back of my garage, will be the next best thing. I'll want to know if my cold frame is having any effect. So I've bought these two little tiny thermometers off Amazon and I'll put the link to those below this video. And if you buy them, I will get commission. So thank you for your support. I'll put one of these inside the cold frame and I'll put one outside the cold frame and they link to an app. They weren't that expensive. So I'll be able to see if the cold frame is having any effect on the average temperatures. The other thing I'm going to do to test my cold frame is plant a little tray of seeds and keep them outside of the cold frame. So we'll be able to check whether the ones inside are doing significantly better than the ones outside. And this will be a series of three videos. The first one is this one where I make the cold frame. Then I'll do another one where I plant the seeds. And finally, the third one is going to be quite interesting because I'm going to create some Hugel culture bulk bag raised beds using these bulk bags. These were left over from when I had the gravel delivered for the formal parterre. And I'm going to make a Hugel culture raised bed and the seedlings that come on from the coal frame will eventually be planted into those raised beds. So that will be video three. And I'll put links to these above this video eventually when I make those videos. But for now, let's get on with the coal frame. I'm going to put these under a brick because it's quite blustery today. I don't want them to blow away. The construction, loosely, will be a brick wall made with these bricks which I inherited with the property I've just bought. The lid will be this piece of polythene sheet which you would normally see on top of a conservatory so I expect that's good for keeping heat in. I'm going to strengthen that with a couple of wooden battens. I'm also going to line the floor with cardboard. In theory that should give it a little bit of extra insulation. The first thing I need to do is level the piece of ground where I'm going to construct it so that we have a nice straight level wall for this to sit on top of. So I'm going to put the polythene sheet up just so that I know how much space I need and I'm going to use a straight edge to give me a level. I'll move this cardboard out of the way now I'll just use my rake to level off the ground. It'll only take me a few minutes. With a bit of a dip there I can see. There's a big lump of stone there that can come out. That's a brick. When you're doing a job like this, it's often a good idea to step back and have a look from a distance. That's coming on quite nicely. There's still a bit of a dip here. I shall rake a bit of that back into it. That's the lid of it, so that's about how big it's going to be. I'm looking at that now. I'm thinking that's pretty level. There's a bit of an elevated bit in that corner. So there is our nicely level piece of ground. It needs to be the same size as this piece of polythene. So how many bricks will we need to do that? Let's measure it. It's 220 centimeters. And each brick is 22. That's convenient. So I guess that means there's 10 bricks that way. And that's 70 divided by 22. So that's approximately three that way. So now that I've got a flat piece of ground, I know about how big it is. I shall start laying some bricks down. I'll just draw that forwards to give me an idea of how far along the back I've got to go. This is probably going to be one of those times where I fast forward the video so that you don't get bored.
and we were right it is 10 bricks along the back and we said it was three front to back so if we reckon that one brick is a half a brick that will be our loose shape that gives us three at each end all I need to do now is the front line So that's about the shape of it. Let's put the plastic sheet on top to see if it fits. And that fits perfectly. There's a slight overhang. It's not high enough, of course. So we'll now use the rest of the bricks to build it up. I'll put a bond on these bricks, which basically means I'll offset them. It'll give it more rigidity and more structural security. So here goes, I'll see you in a minute when I've put all the other bricks on top. So there it is, our cold frame construction. Next thing I'm gonna do is strengthen the top because that's a bit flimsy. I want to strengthen it so that I can put a brick on it so that I can weight it down so it doesn't blow away. I'm also going to line this with cardboard just for the extra layer of insulation. It's really hot work. Surprisingly warm today. So I'm going to take my coat off. Look what I found when I was building this little wall. And one of these bricks, two little snails there. Can you see them? I don't know that they're just sleeping there for the day until tonight when they'll come out. I'll have a wander around the garden or whether they're actually hibernating. And there's another one there, there's three. Now my approach to slugs and snails is not to kill them. I'll just leave them for the ecosystem. I like biodiversity. It might encourage thrushes and songbirds and also it might encourage hedgehogs. And I've actually done a recent video about hedgehogs and I'm hoping to be able to release some into my garden. So let's get on with strengthening this top putting the cardboard in the bottom and then I will place one of these thermometers on the inside and one on the outside and I'll be able to track the difference in the temperature. I will report back on my findings. My next video is going to be planting out the seeds into seed trays and putting them inside here. I've already mentioned it but I'll put one outside just to see if there's a marked difference. And then the third video in the series will be the Hugo Culture bulk bag raised bed which will be just there. And the seedlings from here will go into the top of that Hugo Culture bulk bag raised bed. I might even do a little video on this. Comment below if you'd like to know all about these things. And I hope you found that useful. You'll now see me put the rest of this together. If you have liked it, please do like it and share it because that helps YouTube know it's a good video. And also comment below because it's always nice to hear from you. And if you can have a look at my Amazon links because if you buy any products through my links I will get some commission and that's a great way you can support me in my gardening adventures and see you soon